Dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, welcome again at the uh, Euronco platform today in bladder cancer. Uh, I'm very happy to have uh, with me one of my friends, Alessia Tim Timadamore, uh, who is a pathologist in uh, Udine in Italy. Uh, you are assistant professor there and you are also a part of the Young Academic of Urology uh, Bladder Cancer Group. So I'm very happy to have you on board as a, one of the brilliant Europathologists uh, so far. That's great. So today uh, I wanted to discuss with you the FGFR screening. Yes. So nowadays in pathologists we screen for FGFR um, after the request of the oncologist. So if the patient is an advanced uh, patient with metastatic bladder cancer that is a pos potential candidate for therapy with erdafitinib, which is the only now FDA approved uh, F and FGFR inhibitors. Mm -hmm. And so um, we screen the patient, we test the patient, the tumor uh, for FGFR3 alteration and fusions with the companion diagnostic test which is uh, the Terra screen test offered by Kiagen which is a uh, reverse transcriptase uh, PCR that is uh, uh, that, that, that just found the the hotspot mutation in the FGFR3 gene and two fusion the FGFR3 TAC3 gene uh, this is the most frequent fusion in the advanced bladder cancers and also the four point mutation are the most common in this setting and uh, uh, with this test, uh, we can select patients that are high potential candidates that can uh, have the erdafitinib therapy. Um, in, we can also test this patient with NGS-based platform, which are more accurate because the test is not just focused on the four hotspot mutation of GFR3, but also on other genes. So we can have a, a more comprehensive biology of the, of the tumor. And and it's reasonable to apply an NGS platform because now the pathology lab are most of all equipped with NGS platform. Instead, the other tests, we should acquire the test and validate the test inside. Okay. And uh, from your experience, what do you think about, for, for a pragmatic clinical point of view, uh, in which settings do you think FGFR has the most interest? Uh, in, is it in bladder cancer, in muscle invasive, in uh, metastatic, in upper tract, or in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer? We already know a bit of the, um, the incidence of FGFR alterations uh, according to this uh, yes. diseases what do you what do you think yeah, so now we are testing just on the metastatic patient, uh, starting from the formally fixed paraffin embedded material that we have from TUR or cystectomy. And but we know that the rate of uh, incidence of this uh, mutation is higher in the non-muscle invasive settings. Yeah, so indeed, for met metastatic, it's only 10, 20 percent. Yes, exactly. And instead, when we talk about non-muscle invasive, the incidence is about 70 percent. It's also uh, it's a very interesting setting which we can test this uh, this type of patient maybe because the uh, effect of erdafitinib will be very um, very important in in that setting because maybe we can treat some patient and propose a bladder sparing instead of uh, uh, a cystectomy in the setting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, probably there is a, there is a, a big interest and big room for pan-FTFR inhibitors, uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors in, the, in these settings. And what about upper tract urinary carcinoma? Yeah, uh, there are a few studies that show that the incidence in the upper urinary tract is even higher than the, the non-muscle invasive in bladder cancer. So the upper urinary tract is another uh, target that we can uh, test uh, in case of uh, approval of some uh, uh, FGFR inhibitors. And we also know that there is uh, some heterogeneity in the same tumor because there are a few reports that uh, show that if we sequence the muscle invasive component and if we sequence the non-muscle invasive component, we obtain different results. So sometimes the muscle invasive component is not FGFR mutated, instead the upper, the, the non-muscle invasive, the, the papillary component of the neoplasm can be FGFR mutated. Okay, so, so it's that's, that's, that's maybe also a reason why we, we have uh, a lower number of, of patients that, uh, that have uh, alteration when we, we screen them in the first uh, settings of studies where we have only 20% to 40%. Exactly, and the, the role of the pathologist in uh, selecting the correct area 
for DNA extraction, RNA extraction is a fundamental because he has to know the differences between the two components and also he has to avoid the necrosis, the part that are not uh, DNA rich because also the Terra screen test is based on RNA and we know that RNA is a very unstable and uh, it's a very fragile um, uh, material. So maybe we should test the patient before it becomes metastatic, even after cystectomy. Okay, so that's very interesting also that you tell us that we need to, to take care of how we do our, uh, probably our, even for if we think about non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, uh, maybe uh, unblocks uh, resection might be more interesting to assess FGFR alteration if you have uh, several differences between muscle and, and um, exactly the non Exactly, because the unblock we can obtain a well-oriented specimen instead of fragmented uh, specimen in the conventional tool. So the unblock will allow us to uh, correctly identify the FGFR mutation in the non-muscle invasive or in the muscle invasive or even if in, in a setting of non-muscle invasive cancer in the, uh, in, the in the invading fossa into the lamina propria instead of the papillary that are uh, the exophytic part. Okay, that's fantastic. That's a great insight for uh, the future studies that will look at FGFR in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Thank you very much, Alessia, for your time. It was Thank great you. to have you with us and see you soon. Thank you.